Hello and welcome to Silence is Golden, a very special Ray and Gin episode. I'm Ginny Mack. And I'm Ray Miladoni. Today in this episode, we're going to hear about Matt's uh, presentation at WordCamp Europe. We're going to learn a bit about mobile first indexing and why you shouldn't panic. And Ray is going to talk to us about the powers of remarketing. Stay with us. <laughs> Yes, it's a different setup today. This is very weird for me, I must admit. Normally I'm behind the cameras. This is my first appearance, and Jin, uh, I don't know how I feel. <laughs> We've dragged Ray out and put him in front of the camera. I need more buttons and, you know, <laughs> things to be pushing. Uh, <laughs> I've lost control. <laughs> no, now we get to really get your knowledge, because Ray is a fountain of knowledge, so he's going to tell us some, some more of that later on. But why you ask, or why you're thinking that it's Ray and Jin today, it's because Simon and Troy are sunning themselves in sunny San Diego right as we speak. They are in the middle of running a WP Elevation mastermind and we've got the technology to cross live to them. I have word, Troy and Simon are joining us live Come from in. San Diego. <laughs> hello, hey guys. Hello. Is that coming through loud and clear? Hey gang. How you doing? Good. Can you hear us all right? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us what this Mavericks Mastermind is all about. <laughs> well, uh, this is for our um, WP Elevation customers that actually they want to leverage their business and they want to they scale it to the next level. So we're all here to, to learn more about their businesses. We're all here because, you know, the brain, the collective brain is a lot better than just us individually trying to work on our businesses. And it's like day one has been pretty impactful so far. Uh, we're just wrapping up right now at the moment, actually. So you can see the, uh, you'll be able to see the slides in the back background. You can see the, uh, the Mavericks here as well. Uh, so we've worked on uh, profitability today uh, with everyone putting together all their best ideas, all of their challenges, and we all put our heads together to try to solve them for each other's businesses. Uh, we also worked on lead generation, which was a pretty, pretty epic session. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some really great ideas, a lot of very impactful takeaways, a couple of tears. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been it's been great. Awesome, and now we're awesome. going to go get drunk in the hot tub. <laughs> yeah, I did hear the rumors that there's a boat cruise or something. That's tomorrow night. Woohoo! And you've got people from not just America, like there's um, Paul from the Netherlands and everything. Yeah. So it's a great melting pot of, of minds there. Paul just gave me a present, which was a, a, um, a Dutch uh, cheese slicer. And wow. some, I can't remember what he called these things, but little clogs. Clogs. <laughs> well, guys, boomerang or anything, but maybe next time. We'll let you go and enjoy the hot tub. <laughs> if you want to cross back to us throughout the show, if you've got time, we'll, we'll just let us know and we'll cross back. But otherwise, have a great night tonight and, and hope it all goes well tomorrow. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks, right. guys. Cool. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. We will. Jealous. I don't know how good is that. Well, I hope you got a good little glimpse of what uh, you know life is like as a maverick, and you know getting into one of our masterminds, which we absolutely love organising and seeing them unfold. Yeah, so much fun. Well, let's leave them and have a look at what's been happening in the news, shall we? Stop. Good happen. I'm going to start with an article I found about Matt Mullingworg's um, keynote sp speech at WordCamp Europe this, uh, this week. So apparently WordCamp Europe was huge success. We had one of our um, really valued members, Wendy, uh, who was one of the volunteers and helped organise a big part of it. And she said it was just such an amazing vibe. So Matt got up and had his keynote and it, was, it had mixed results. So some people were a bit sceptical, some thought it was really good. So basically he was talking about Gutenberg and the rollout of Gutenberg yeah. and how that's all going to happen. So pretty much to summarise, he's think is, is thinking that it's going to be all fully ready to go with uh, the 5.0 release of WordPress in August. So some people were a bit worried about that accelerated rollout of the time frame and how that was all going to go. But he seems to be quite confident about it. Um, and in this article, there's a nice breakdown of, you know, June, July, August, what's going to happen, the bugs that they're going to try and fix. So in August, the plan is for all critical issues to be resolved. And there was a little something going on about being able to edit or in your mobile. So there was a problem there. So that's, that's a big one that they're trying to fix as well. 
August I'll have, have integration with Calypso, offering opt-in for users, and the plan is for a hundred plus thousand sites um, having made. Oh, hold on, where? It, oh, let me try. I found this quite interesting. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, and I can't help you because I haven't read that oh article. Oh Sorry, Gina. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, a hundred thousand plus sites having made two hundred and fifty thousand posts using Gutenberg posts. Okay, so anyway, it sounds promising, but let's just wait and see um, if that time frame is going to... How are they going to measure that, though? Like, are, yeah. they, are they looking at all the posts? I don't know, that's a weird, a weird, know, a weird goal, you know, to kind of be tracking towards, you know, are, is it going to be through their surveys that they run? Um, <coughs> you know, yeah, so that's a bit of an interesting goal. Mm. But anyway, it's definitely worth a read that article just to see where they're at with things as well and see what you think as well. So my next article that I thought was interesting was welcome at, at a visit. Now, am I being a little bit um, uh, ignorant here saying that I haven't heard of at a visit before? Have you? No. No. Okay, good. So I'm not the only one. So at a visit is actually a... a, a, oh, a hang on. It's all about long form reading and journalism. So I, I've looked into it and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like it's a great platform for really good authors to write long form form journalism and articles with beautiful images and done really well. So what is happening with at a visit is they have now joined forces with Automatic. Mm -hmm. So now that they're under this whole WordPress Automatic platform, I suppose the summary of the whole article is they just want to be able to then widen their audience and widen their reach of people that they're reaching out to. So yeah, if you're interested in that and to see that the changes that that's going to make, there's an interview with two of the key staff at, at a visit and how they're excited about what's happening with their new partnership with Automatic. Mm, I have heard about this concept. I think it's really good because it means that um, there's more quality being produced as opposed to that real quick, punchy, you know, maybe spammy type of article writing and topic change. This enables people to really go deep on a topic and, you know, very similar to what happens in PhDs and people who write thesis and things like that, that long form journaling um, and, you know, possibly all that kind of stuff, which I think the internet is missing at the moment. Um, yeah, with, with and that, that really good quality <coughs> as well. Just make sure you've got plenty of time and a cup of tea to sit down and read the articles because oh, they do go for a while. Text to speech engine. Oh, there you go. Reads yeah. to me, <laughs> Siri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, so there you go. So they were the, the ones that I felt were interesting. What about you? Did you find anything this week? Yes. Um, so just wanted to remind everyone that if you do enjoy the articles that we share during the Science is Golden, um, you can get more of this fix every Wednesday via our WP Wednesday newsletter. So if you head over to uh, the WP Wednesday, Wednesday. Yep. com, I think it is. I think there's a lower third that might come up um, and we'll put links in the show notes. But we send out a newsletter every Wednesday with about 10 to 12 different articles and it gives you a bit more of a fix than what we cover off on the show. And sometimes we grab the best articles from that. Um, and so I found this one really interesting because for me, mobile first has always been um, something that I try and champion here at WPE. Um, and um, it's just really about like <coughs> the reality is that everyone's on mobile these days. We're searching on mobile, we're digesting content, we're listening to podcasts and videos. And so Google is kind of moving to this mobile first indexing. And this article uh, definitely kind of shows you, I find it weird that the first one is don't panic because it's not really um, something that you can do. But um, I, I found it really interesting. Um, you know, there's a lot of tests now that you can run. So there's a link on this article to use the Google mobile friendliness test tool, which um, will enable you to see what your website looks like. Um, it talks about UX, like user design and user experience on mobile. I think that's a really important thing. There's lots of websites where they've got a lot of pop-ups and little side menus and sidebars, and they just don't really work well um, on, on mobile. Um, it also talks about writing for mobile friendly, so the length of the articles, you know, maybe now we're getting to a point where you serve a bit of text on mobile and a different text on desktop. Uh, I know some of the tools that we use, like ClickFunnels and things like that, you can display and hide different boxes uh, on different platforms. So, you know, keeping those uh, things uh, top of mind when, w when designing your web page and so forth. But I'll let you read the article for the rest. Um, but uh, I think it's definitely, you know, putting yourself in the viewers' eyes and, and their experience. I think as business owners and website owners, sometimes we can kind of forget what um, the experience that our vi visitors go through. So, Ray, like, websites have been being designed responsive for, for ages now. So why are we, what's this mobile first like? Yeah. Is it just being even more 
um, detailed about how we're designing it to be more responsive. Yeah, I think so, because responsive basically says like grab the website and if I shrink the size of the browser, does everything kind of look neat and responsible? Um, that, that works really well in one, in one sense, but this I think is taking it to the next level and basically kind of, you know, looking at your, your, your topics, your subject lines, your, your button sizes. Just because a button is responsive doesn't mean it's what people expect to have as an experience on a mobile um, device. You know, pop-ups is probably one of the big things, the way that people navigate, hamburger menus, things like that can just be uh, thought of a little bit more. Uh, but the, 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 the trick is that now Google is actually looking at these elements to reflect your Google and your, your rankings um, okay. because Google's all about the user experience. Um, so when you're designing websites and the content that goes in the website, should you be more concerned about how that's going to look on a mobile mobile as, a, as opposed to what you, you know, you're just generally doing to make the website good? Yep, that's, that's kind of what the mobile first... Um, theory is about is design for mobile first, make sure that's your best experience yep. and then think about the mm, others. So okay. for instance, for us, we're in the process now of reviewing our uh, members back end because it isn't as mobile friendly. And uh, we do have a lot of students who want to watch videos on the run, in the train, not physically on the run, but on the go. Well, maybe while they're, they're doing Jogging. their fitness <laughs> on a, uh, but you know, watching all those videos and having a good member website via mobile is definitely something that we're kind of focusing on in the next um, six months. So. Cool. All right. Oh, that's interesting. Any any other? Uh, yeah, I found this other tool really kind of cool. Um, you'll see with the lower third, uh, the way that this company is pronounced. Um, I was calling it Metoric, <laughs> but it's actually Metric. We had a big debate, differently. didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I had to actually watch the video <laughs> to know how to pronounce this uh, <laughs> tool's name. But it's a it's a really nice looking dashboard for WooCommerce, and um, the article that we're linking to. Uh, is basically an interview with Bryce Adams, um, who's the, the founder. And um, yeah, and, and I just think it's a really good way, especially here at, uh, in our company, we're um, putting data and we're becoming a little bit more of a data-driven company. I think if you don't have your finger on the pulse, it's very hard to make day-to-day -day <coughs> business decisions. And so, you know, WooCommerce is definitely a great engine for completing online orders. And, um, you know, Simon's how-to video this week, uh, he basically shows you how to add care plans using WooCommerce and subscriptions with Stripe. And y you know, if you know exactly how much money is coming in, how much you've made that month, how much you're expected to make coming forward, it's gonna give you the best way of keeping your finger on the pulse of your business. And this is a dashboard that kind of plugs in and, and um, shows you all your stats and figures and you can kind of then make better, better business decisions, see what you know, products you need to promote. It was very good, I, I kind of like it. And I'm an analytical type of guy, so that's why this article kind of um, piqued my interest. Sounds good. Yeah, so... So yeah. that's it for news this week. Um, but there's been something else that's been on my mind lately and I'll tell you about that in a moment. This pisses me off. Ooh, I'm excited. What's pissing you off, Jim? <laughs> Can I just say this is officially my first This is Pisses Me Off? So I've done this episode, I've done Simon's has gone quite a few times and the boys always say, have you got anything that pisses you off? And it's like, no, I don't. I want something that pisses me off. So today I do. So the other, oh, the other week I was on the, on the net and I was looking up, my son was going on a three day hike and I needed to find a really good quality sleeping bag that was going below zero, below five degrees. So I was Googling away and one that really got my interest was on MatPack. And uh, you know, so anyway, I looked at that a couple of times and ever since then, it's seriously probably been about, oh no, I'd say two, two and a half, three weeks, Matt Pack sleeping bag, the orange one with the tailed in tapered has been following me around and I am pissed off. <laughs> what is this big brother thing? I know that it, it's meant to encourage you to buy it, but it's actually making me angry and it's making me not want to buy it because really? it's following me on every side I go to. Wow, that's interesting. And I'm just thinking, luckily, it was something as, as simple as a sleeping bag. And, you know, imagine if you were Googling something and you were looking for something not quite sa savouring and it was following you around <laughs> everywhere. So have you brought this bag yet? No, I mm. borrowed one from a friend to save the $500. <laughs> and uh, if I do, look, who knows if it's going to work or not. But let me tell you, it, it is top of mind. So, you know, it obviously is sort of advertising works. But yeah, it's very annoying. It really pisses me off. <laughs>
Do you find those experiences? I do, I do. I think, I think um, I, it's funny that you say that because today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about remarketing um, in our next segment, so stick with us for that one. But this is remarketing where it works and sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, and there is, you know, the, the argument out there that, you know, how do you use remarketing? Maybe people are using it wrong. Um, <coughs> I, I think it does work I in a way if it keeps it top of mind. I think it breaks when you actually go buy the product and it's still following you around. And, um, you know, if the frequency is too high, in marketing there's a terminology called frequency and that's really important to, to see on Facebook Ads Manager how often your ad's been shown. And if, 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 if the ad's been shown way too many times, like five or six times, then the frequency is too high. You know, so the, the data is there to make sure that people have a good user experience. Ah. Um, you know. So, okay, so that's interesting. I didn't know that there was a, a certain amount of times that it would show before. Uh, is there a way that it does actually work out if you buy it, it'll stop showing it? Well, it depends because if you're pixeled on a particular website and then you go and buy from B, oh. then they won't know about it. Yeah, okay. You know? yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those hard things, but um, definitely, uh, you know, ad advertising aging, like only maybe following you for three days or four days when your buying decision is going to be higher. Um, you know, there's some rules that can be put around, um, around that. Cool. Can you just jump back to Asana? Yeah. Or are you I being logged out? I've logged out. I'll oh, okay, cool. Perfect. Okay. Um, cool. All right. Well, that is very interesting. And with that, then we might move on to our next. Which I started by now. Let's get unstuck. <laughs> cool. Well, let's get unstuck. So today we asked our community a bit of a question, and it kind of did build the theme around this show today. I must be honest. Um, the question was basically, um, I can't remember who said it, but it was on the lines of. How do you know how much effort and time do you put into like building new relationships and, and, and go out and chasing new leads to remarketing and nurturing your existing list and leads? And I, I think this is a really important topic. And obviously my role here is uh, in marketing. So I'm really big on that whole lead nurturing and um, you know giving love to the people who already know about your brand and not always be chasing the new leads and so forth. Obviously there's a balance and I guess that's one of the tricky tricky things to, to cover off in this question because that's kind of what, like, what is the balance? Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? Is it 10-90? Um, I think that's what every business owner needs to explore. Um, and is it different for every everyone or is there a standard sort of rule? Look, I don't think there is a cookie cutter, this is the rule. Mm. Um, I think sometimes maybe we can fall back on that whole 80-20 rule um, where 80% maybe is about chasing new, new prospects and new business. But, you know, I think with like, remarketing, which is one of the things that we're going to talk a lot about today, I it's really important to make sure that people who already know about your brand are reminded that you exist or that you have an offer. I, I remember one of um, our members kind of wrote in and going, oh, I didn't know that you launched the Mavericks. Like, how come you didn't let me know? Like, I would definitely have been interested in knowing more about it. Um, and, and that's an example of where we, we went out and made an announcement to our current members, but we maybe forgot to, you know, to, to speak to our past members who did know about us. So th those little things are, are kind of, I think, matter. Um, and it doesn't have to be through remarketing. I think sometimes it's just, you know, around newsletters, um, you know, rem remembering people's birthdays and giving them a birthday offer, um, cat cart abandonment um, campaigns, you know, when someone hits your cart and adds some things to it, uh, are you following up with them? I think a lot of business owners leave a lot of money on the table by not actually following up and nurturing the people who already know about, about their brand. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think, y you know, you just really need to explore that in your business and maybe, maybe the thought is just are you thinking about uh, nurturing your existing list uh, or are you constantly building ads to fill your top of the funnel and you're not actually nurturing the people who already know about you? And sometimes a quick email like asking people if they know one other person who might be interested in the SaaS product or your offering could bring in, you know, quite a lot of revenue as opposed to trying to buy that revenue through cold paid ads. Okay, so really have a look at, you know, at, at what you're doing, step back, have a look at what you're doing and, and think, okay, how much time approximately would I be spending on bringing in new leads as opposed to the relationships I've got? And if you're feeling it's too far out of whack, these are low hanging fruits mm. and there's some great tips that, that you can do to, to, to really nurture these current um, clients. 
So, um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Just sort yeah. of step back, take stock, and then make a decision from that. That's right. And start with 10%. And if you find that that starts working, increase it to 20, increase it to 30, and then keep going until the efforts stop giving you more return. Yeah. And then you know that that's your sweet spot. Monitor Ma the results yeah. and see from the effort you're putting in what sort of results <laughs> you're getting. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, on that, I think that's the perfect segue to our golden nugget. Let's do it. Time to dig into the gold nugget. So let's chat about chasing the list you have and, and nurturing that list um, and your warm leads as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is perfect from our question and, and talking about remarketing, um, but it's not necessarily just about remarketing and Facebook and, and, and you know, a lot of the other pixel things. But uh, the golden nugget is just knowing who knows about you. So the first step would be, you know, install the pixel codes uh, across your websites, whether that be uh, the Google Pixel, the YouTube Pixel, the Facebook Pixel, the LinkedIn Pixel, the Twitter Pixel. There's so many pixels and conversion um, codes that you can use now. Um, Google Tag Manager uh, is a great way to manage all those, those tags. So you're putting everything into Google Tag Manager and just embedding one code on your website. Um, that should have been our tool of the week, but it wasn't. Oh, yeah. It's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, that's probably one of the best things. That's what we've done here. Um, with us is we've got a lot of the pixel codes going. So then that way, if in two months time, we decide that we want to run a campaign to anyone who's read a particular article, we can go and look at that through the 180 day um, history window that you're allowed to kind of market to. And are they, uh, what's the cost point for those? Are they free or? Free, free. Oh, cool. So, you know, why not collect the data? Even if you do nothing with, which I don't recommend you do, mm. but even if you don't, at least the data's there and at least you're able to go back and have a look and see who's been on your website and give them a message uh, down the track. So uh, it, it's it's very p very powerful. So I think that's the first step in you know kind of chasing the list that you have. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do as well is a lot of these platforms enable you to upload your data into uh, a custom audience or an audience type. And I think that's really powerful because I think there would be a lot of business owners who may have offline transactions or an e-commerce website with a large number of users on the list. Now, um, it, as long as they've done a transaction with you and you're following all your local privacy laws and things like that, um, there are tools where you can actually upload your list. Well, Facebook natively allows you to upload a database and see how many matches there are and whether you can remarket a message to them. So always keep it specific to the same message. If you sell pots and pans and then you go and sell them um, you know, an online course, then there's no real consistency. That's not the product they purchase. But if it makes sense to market people, um, you know, you've got to work smart uh, when it comes to these marketing uh, exercises. Don't, you know, piss people off like what's happened to you, where it was too much or maybe the wrong product, um, or you're looking at the cheap ones and they're marketing you the expensive ones. Um, th there's a lot of, lot of different layers, but put some thought to that. But just talk to your existing list, like ring them up, say hi, let them know that you're thinking about it when it's their birthday. Um, you know, just really nurture your warm list. And um, there's a saying that I kind of always uh, live by, which is no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And nurturing your list is really about that caring factor and letting people know that uh, you're, you're, you're thinking about them. So think about that when you are you know got some downtime, like maybe it's worth pinning some of your top clients and just seeing what they need some help with or what, what how you can make them feel good or and win. So, yeah, I, li I like the way we you, you've covered there the, the warm leads, so people who aren't necessarily even um, customers yet. So that's really good. And I suppose my job as the, the customer happiness manager at WPE, I want to really look out for how can I look after our current members. So at the moment, you sign up and you've signed up for a year. So you've got that membership for a year. So that includes the six-week blueprint, and then you've got a year of fun and games with WPE. So what I want to try and do is after that 12 months, the membership will then go over to a, you know, a monthly subscription. And I want to, at the moment, we've got about a 50% um, rate of, um, of, what's the word, churn. So at that point. So what I want to do is try and lift that up. I want to see how we can keep improving that experience so people, to make it a no-brainer for people to stay. So we've been talking about this a lot lately. We've just done Stu McLaren's Tribe course. So we've been talking a lot about how we can really nurture these people because 
they know us. We've got a great relationship with yeah. them. And often the reason, you know, people are going is that they're, they're getting too busy in their work, which is a great reason to go because that's what we want them to be, busy. But I want to be able to say, okay, well, we're going to supply you with some great training. We're going to give you these extra things to keep you going. And you even mentioned little things that we look after our, peop our people with, like, um, you know, we do a, a great fun birthday f a message mm. to them. And swag is always a good one as well. Like we're, we're around your, your WPE stuff with pride. So we're looking at that sort of stuff too. So yeah, it's both warm leads who aren't converted yet and your current ones because people who are with you, if you keep wowing them and giving them, showing them how great you are and what you can do for them, more so what you can do for them and how you're making their life easier makes a big difference. Absolutely. And I just realised we should probably be checking the comments <laughs> to see if oh anyone's yeah. asking any questions Didn't and stuff. Didn't even think but, um, about that. Um, yeah, but uh, I think I think definitely um, keeping uh, keeping uh, in touch with your current customers is really really important. And, and 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 this is warm leads as well. It's not necessarily about people who have already done business with you. It's about people who may potentially do business with you. Um, you know, there's you, you know you got to follow up. You got to you know. Last week we spoke about the anti follow up, which is about following up, but not coming across looking like you know you're desperate and that you need uh, that sale. But just keep adding value. Um, I got uh, a little bit of this this week. We've um, been exploring lifting the quality of our podcast to a new level. And um, we've reached out to some creative agencies uh, here in Melbourne. Um, and a shout out to Wave Creative, Adam. He sent me a message yesterday about how um, podcasts are now available natively on Google and uh, what that kind of looks like. And he's put a whole presentation together with like how to get started and how to submit it to the Google platform and um, you know some what what the branding looks like and his oh opinions cool. and his thoughts and I just thought that was a really great anti follow up. He reminded me that he's thinking of me, but he hasn't asked how are we going with that proposal that I sent you last week. So I'm not sure if he's been watching the shows and following some of our tactics, but that's that is you know an example where he's made me feel good because he's given me some value and he hasn't spoken about you know the potential of doing business. Um, and that's a, you know an, an exercise of nurturing your current list and your leads and your prospects. Um, from from that angle and uh, and and popping it somewhere in an Excel spreadsheet, a CRM system. I often, you know, just go through my Facebook Messenger app and just kind of see who I haven't contacted in a while and just kind of reach out to them and say, "Hey, how you doing?" Um, you know, just 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 to be friendly. You know, I, yeah. think, the, I think the world yeah. needs that at That's these days. Good. <laughs> Some good tips there. And oh, uh, this is funny. Brett Drinkwater says that he kept get getting um, WP ads on <laughs> Facebook, even though he's been a member since September huh. 19, 20, 2017. Well, Sorry, that's Brett. really interesting we because we this need to look at that. <laughs> well, that, that's actually going to be a good segue into the next tool that I speak oh, about. Oh, good. Actually. Okay. And then Barbara <laughs> said she finally caught us live. Thanks, Yay. Barbara. Great to have you here. <coughs> Hi, Josh. Lots of smiley Hi, faces. Jane. Look at them. Yeah, <laughs> cool. All right. Well, let's talk about our next segment then, that special tool. Get ready for Tool of the Week. This is where Simon, uh, Troy normally points to Simon oh. as the Tool of the Week, so I get to point to oh. you. Oh, great. So funny. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Troy, for your dad jokes. <laughs> what so have you got? What have I got? So it's really interesting with what Brett, um, Brett was it Brett? Yeah, Brett, yeah. Um, <coughs> he talked about like he's a customer, and, um, and this is an example where we are probably doing remarketing really badly. Um, <laughs> So the tool of the week is a program called Sync to CRM. Um, basically what Sync to CRM does is it connects with Infusionsoft, which is what we use as our CRM system, Active Campaign or MailChimp. So it's only those three at the moment, but what it does is it grabs your database through those mailing campaigns and it synchronizes that data onto Facebook's audience manager. So we actually have lists that basically can sync every one hour, two hours, 24 hours, once a week, where we can synchronize that data. And so Brett should actually be on the current member's database. So obviously okay. we've got an ad built somewhere and we haven't excluded that oh, custom audience. Oh, gotcha. So that's a way where we've kind of done it really bad. Where we do do it really good is when we're marketing. And so our entire webinar um, campaign uses sync to, sync to CRM. So we know who's visited the webinar page, who's been tagged that they're attending, who's attended the webinar and who missed it. And the reason why we do that is so we can send a different message via remarketing based on what tags they have in Infusionsoft. So if someone's gone to the webinar page and not actually booked in, you, uh, we, we can kind of see that if they're on our database already. If they're new leads, they need to opt in 
And then we can say, hey, we're excited to see you on the webinar this week. Um, and we can send a message like that. And then if they've missed it, we can say, here's the replay. If they've attended, here's a reminder of the special. So they're getting different messages. And I just think this tool has made it really easy. I know from my point of view in marketing, um, I've, I've been able to create all these different uh, lists that are always synchronizing. Wow, how cool is technology? Yeah, I know, I love it. You know? <laughs> and that's what's great. Like, why keep sending a message about the fact that you've missed a webinar when you've just signed up? Yes, so now a generic message, yeah. like, to, to really focus on what that per where that person is at. It's perfect. Yeah, and for yeah. the first seven days of when someone a gets added to the um, new, new members database, they get a thank you message and say, make sure you go and do the onboarding. So, you know, we're just trying to give that wow experience right through the journey. So marketing doesn't become annoying, it's actually helpful. Um, and, um, you know, we're just playing around with different things like that. But I think that's when remarketing can get very powerful and uh, if it's done right. And a lot of people focus on uh, the audience to include, but I think it's really important to who you're going to exclude. And, you know, that's an example with Brett where we're not excluding current members from an ad that's talking about <coughs> uh, something new or a webinar or joining WP Elevation, which they've already done. Okay, we'll add that to our to-do list. Yeah. <laughs> and is this t is this easy enough to use? So someone like me, I'm wanting to get into it, I don't know a lot about it, is it pretty user-friendly? Yep, there's a 30-day trial, so you can kind of go and give it a spin if you like. But yes, it is very easy. You basically integrate it with your uh, tool, whether it be Infusionsoft, MailChimp, or ActiveCampaign, uh, and then it brings up your entire list of tags, and you basically just create you know, a, a rule and say, if someone has this tag, like current member, then, sync them with this list and then automatically goes and creates it on Facebook and then the next time you load up Facebook custom audience you'll see that audience there and one of the little tips that we do is we put little square bra brackets and go sync to CRM at the start so I can easily filter and know which of my custom audiences are coming from this tool so if I need to make a change I know where to go and do mm. the edit. That is a cool little tip. Little hot tip for you, and freebie. <laughs> and on cool little hot tips if you want to get more of these tips, we do a great how-to episode series, um, which is just really short and sweet and punchy, and it's got some awesome tips like that. And you can watch that. Simon often does them, but you can watch that on our YouTube uh, station. And make sure, if you haven't, subscribe. YouTube station. <laughs> <laughs> on the YouTube, Jin. <laughs> watch it on the YouTube. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube WP Elevation, <laughs> it's worth doing. <laughs> that's right. And that's at WPElevation.com slash YouTube. <laughs> very simple and very easy. You'll get awesome hot tips like that one. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, so that was our tool of the week. That's shall we move on? We shall. What have we got to move on to? I think that's oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> I'm so Ooh. glad that Max didn't go to the outro. <laughs> Oh, that would have been awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, you can see that we're a little uh, not as quite as polished, but oh, come on. we have a bit of fun, come don't on. we, Ray? I think we did pretty all right. And I love the fresh <laughs> marketing take on things. Yeah. If you want to vote for oh Ray God. and me to do this every week and to ditch Simon and Troy, <laughs> tell us in the comments because we are here, we are ready. We are, we are, we are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we'll fight. Make them stay over in the US. So <laughs> let us know. Anyway, I think, yeah. I, I feel like I was going to say something, but I can't <laughs> remember. Sorry, I'm probably I don't know. interrupting yeah, you. I don't know. But yeah, we talked about how to follow us, subscribe, give us likes, give us some love, please. Um, yeah, but until we see you, I don't know, are we going to be on next week? We are. Oh, yes. yes we're we still in the US. No, I think, I don't know. Anyway, we'll work it out. I think Troy's going to be back. Maybe not. All right, probably one of us will be on. Yeah, Simon's going to Canada to see yeah, polar bears. He's hugging polar bears, as he <laughs> keeps telling us. So until we see, one of us sees you next week, remember that knowledge is power. And silence is golden. <laughs>